Hi, hope you're all well. I'm Viv and I'm the face behind Skin Farmer Aesthetics in Stockton on Tees. And tonight, uh, myself and Sonny are continuing our journey in the use of ultrasound in our aesthetics work. And we're joined this evening by a cosmetic doctor who's based in Germany, in Hamburg. And he's called Dr. Maurizio Seron. Hi, Sonny. Hope you're well. Uh, there we go. I'll just add Sonny. Let's see. And this doctor that we're going to speak to this evening, we met him a couple of weeks back. And uh, I'll chat with Sonny about that before he joins us. Hi, Viv. How are you doing? Good evening. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Fine. Um, um, I, was just... I was going to say, Maurizio is a surgeon. Maurizio is a... He's, yeah. a, he's a mister, isn't he? So he's a surgeon as well as a cosmetic doctor as well. So He is, he is. Um, I was having a chat with him about his title because in Germany, the MD is uh, has to be stated instead of saying you're a doctor, as in the UK, everyone medically trained can call themselves a doctor. But uh, in Germany, you can't um, use doctor unless you've got a PhD. So we had a bit of a chat about really? that when I was, yeah, you could have a chat with him about that. I'll send him an invite. He hopefully won't be too long. Hi, Mariam. There's a few joining us this evening, I think, Sonny. Um, yes, no, definitely. Mariam's joined us and says, yeah, hi, guys. Thank you, Mariam, for joining us. Yeah. From Abaji, um, um, yeah, there's quite, quite a few. Uh, Dr. Jeannie on some. And uh, yeah, no, we're good, Mariam. Thank you. We should we're probably in the new year get to speak to you again and see what you're up to, especially from the dermatology ultrasound side. Yeah, uh, it'd, be, it'd be nice to uh, speak to one of the practitioners again, the ones, the guests we've spoken to. I think we'll probably speak to all of them again over the next year so at some point. It'd be nice to see what they've got up to over the last 12 months. Um, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I was just mentioning um, Maurizio, where's he gone? I'll just send him another invite. He's um, a cosmetic doctor and surgeon, and we met him over at CMAC a couple of weeks back. And it was interesting to hear his, um, he had a case study not particularly involving ultrasound. Ah, here he is. Hi, Maurizio. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Ah, oh, there he no, is. There you are. Hi guys, I can't hear you so well. I'm trying to, to use my, my phones, my, my headphones. Can you hear me well? We can hear yeah, you well. Yeah. We can definitely hear you, yes. Okay. I think I will just leave it alone with it. Yes, okay. I'm just playing it without. No problem. Nice to see you, Maurizio. Myself and Sonny, we met up um, with you at the CMAC conference two weeks ago, just about. And it was a pleasure to, uh, pleasure to see you and join you also for training um, because I was at the uh, training, the ultrasound training with yourself, uh, Nicola and Leone as well the previous day. So it was really nice to be able to see you face to face. Um, Got to thank you because in Germany, in Hamburg, it's an hour ahead. So you're 9.30 this evening. 9.30. Yes. Yeah. I'm still in the clinic. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, yes. well, I, Really, really, really kind of you to take time out to join us this evening. What I'll do, uh, Maurizio, I'll let Sonny um, speak to you first, introduce you a little bit, talk about your background, and I'll talk a little bit with him about the ultrasound aspect of your work, if that's all right. Yes, of course. Okay, Great. so we have to apologise. We Basically, when we met Maurizio, I'm sure it was by the, the water dispenser at, at the CMAC conference. We just basically kind of just harassed you into coming onto a live with us. I hope I hope that wasn't the case and uh, you're here of your own free will. So it's good to see you again. Um, Thank you so been... much. Thank you so much for having me, guys. It's, uh, no, no, no. We, we thought your very talk, nice. I, I thought your talk at CMAC was, was really good and it resonated, uh, especially when you described the case study, which I'm sure Viv will ask you about later. But Marisa, you've got a lot of people, actually, quite a few of your own um, followers, um, Rikende saying the best doc ever or but best up Maurizio so there's a lot of love there for you um oh, but on, wow. that, on that, on that so journey nice of love, hear. on that journey of love where how did you start in aesthetics if you just for anyone watching now how did you start in aesthetics and then how was that um how was that love for aesthetics that passion for aesthetics surgery as well I know for you how did mm -hmm. ultrasound creep into it so yeah just if you can just tell us a little about your journey 
Well, um, basically, I, I remember doing my first practices uh, at a surgical, um, in a plastic surgery clinic in my hometown. I'm from Colombia. Yes. Um, and I moved to Germany like 20 years ago to, to study medicine. And during those practices, I, I, I was at a plastic surgeon's place and um, he was showing me, he was doing like Sculptra and fillers and Botox. It was 2006, I remember. And that was the first time I saw that and I was really, really fascinated about the results and how about um, botulinum toxin works. And he was also already doing Sculptra and I was like, really, really amazed about all of the things. And um, I, I was in that time during medical school. After that, I did um, six years of uh, abdominal surgery or general surgery because to get into plastic surgery is really, really hard here in Germany. So it's like a very, very difficult thing to do. So I decided to do first general surgical because it's, it's kind of more easy. Yeah. And um, during that time, I was already really, really passionate about aesthetics and was like doing all of the, all of the courses and workshops, like, you know, kind of behind the scenes and like in the background while uh, learning, you know, liver and uh, pancreas and bowel surgery. And after six years, I decided to, to change and I went to plastic surgery because that was actually my goal at that time because we always think if you want to be injecting and doing aesthetics, you have to be a plastic surgeon. Um, and, um, you know, after two years of uh, doing plastic surgery at the university hospital, I got really frustrated um, because I was doing things that I don't really enjoy, to be honest, like, like burn surgery and uh, reconstructive surgery and a lot of hand surgery. And, um, you know, after that, I decided after 14 years to quit uh, hospital, uh, I mean, six years of medical school then, uh, six years of uh, general surgery, two years of, um, uh, of um, plastic surgery. I said, I'm going to start my own business. I was really, really tired of working a 24 hours shift once per week in the hospital. And you know how it is yes, when you are yeah, yeah. working for the system. Um, and yeah, then I actually was already during the time, um, during my abdominal surgery training, very, very familiar to ultrasound. Because, you know, when you work in the ER or, um, you know, analyzing um, abdominal traumas or also doing intraoperative ultrasound of liver metastasis before resecting the liver and all of that. So I was already very familiar. And then going to plastics, we do a lot of um, ultrasound also with hands injuries and all of that. So looking at the tendons and vessels and, and all of that. And you know, when I decided to, to, to change to aesthetics, um, it was 2018 um, to like start injecting regularly. I was doing also that before, but just here and there and helping some friends that were already doing that. You know how it is? Yes, yes. Um, and um, you know, it was really, really interesting how, uh, how it started with the ultrasound because um, I had a complication. It started with complications. Yeah. And um, I remember it was a chin vascular occlusion. And um, at that moment, at that time, I already knew about the, the high uh, doses protocol of the Lorenzi. And I got to manage that um, successfully, thank God. And the patient uh, did very well after that. But, you know, I, I was thinking about, so what am I actually doing, um, injecting faces? And do we really know where our needle is or, or where our cannula at the end um, ends up and how this actually works? So um, I was very, very interested about, um, I remember seeing Leonie, at the, at the, she did a lecture she did a, did a lecture for, for IMCAST, but, you know, it was all digital because it wasn't the COVID time. It was 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw that and I, I said, wow, I, I need to learn more about this. I, I need to learn more about complications. And um, I was already um, um, 
taking a little bit of notes from Lee because I know Lee for some years uh, already. And I, as soon as I saw uh, CMEC, I was actually in the ACE, ACE, or, uh, already taking uh, uh, my notes on learning. So I joined CMEC because of this kind of complication, kind of this, because I wanted to exchange, to, 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 to know about complications, to talk about the things that I see. And, 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 and um, I remember telling Lily, I have this complication. Uh, how can I report this? Where, where do I report this? Do we have like a system? Because here in Germany, there is nothing like that. Okay. And, um, and actually, um, he saw that, um, how I did it, because I did like a very, you know, photographic documentation and videos and, and, and uh, uh, a lot of things. This was not the, the, the VO I presented at CMEC, right? It was another. It was a different one. Okay. Almost two, more, over two years ago. And um, I did a live with, uh, with Jillian, I remember. And after that, um, uh, Lee asked me if I want to join their, their international board. And so it all started. And I got collected, uh, connected to Leonie through that as well. And I, as soon as I could, I did the first course with her. Yeah. I remember it was like one and a half years ago, almost two, two years, I don't know, it's one and a half years ago. It was so difficult to get to London at that time because so many restrictions and tests yeah. and everything was so complicated to get into the UK from Germany. But I said, I don't care, I have to do that. And yes, I did that and I, that my, my journey with the ultrasound started practically at that time, at that moment. Amazing. So what's your mix now of your work in your private clinic? How much surgery are you doing, plastics, and how much um, sort of aesthetic work are you doing? Yes. Well, I actually don't perform surgery anymore. I just surgery. only okay. do, I, I mean, not completely. I do uh, blepharoplasty, like um, okay. very, very easy eyelid surgery, but that's it. And I do it with a, um, in, a, in another clinic when I, where I cooperate. But um, in my own practice that I run with, my, with uh, Marek, yeah. um, we only are specialized on minimal invasive treatments, all around injectables, biostimulators, HA, laser devices, energy-based devices, and um, yes, all about skin health, more or less. Amazingly, and, and amazingly, and that, and that yes, is that's very, what I do very holistic. every day, all the time. <laughs> very actually. good. In terms of, um, so are you using ultrasound now for every single patient that you inject, or do you kind of pick and choose where you think it might be high risk, or do you, what, what's your standard now using ultrasound with each yes. injectable um, patient? It's quite interesting because at the at the beginning, um, it's a, a, a tough learn curve with ultrasound when you when you start and when you are absolutely not familiar with that. If you start like from zero, it's even more difficult. Um, and uh, at the moment, you have the ultrasound there, but you're afraid to use it. You have it like you know in the background, and, and you think, well, it takes so much time. But yeah. you have to start doing it and doing it and, um, and repeatedly. And I actually almost do it every day. Like I do, I, I use it every day, not with every patient because um, it would take a lot of time. Um, but I kind of scan danger zones before I go there, if I want to inject in that area. Or, you know, I always say that um, my ultrasound is like, this is a real friend because this always tells the truth. This always tells you the truth. You know, patients sometimes don't tell the truth and or they forget what they had in the past. And I have some patients that, you know, they have some another kind of uh, permanent uh, injectables in their faces and they want another treatment. And they say, no, it was like 20 years ago. Somebody put me some filler in my, in, in, in my forehead and, you know, talking about silicone and these kind of things. And this guy has really helped me to, to avoid really, really, really ugly problems in some situations, to be honest. One, so one that's where, where, where I like to basically it. use it more to, 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 do like, to do like a facial scan looking for fillers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very good point. One last question for me before I hand over to Viv. Um, you obviously are using ultrasound extensively in your practice now. Um, and when did you start using it? Would, was it two years ago, would you say? Uh, like 
using facial ultrasound in the yeah. practice? Yes. Oh, I think it's almost two years ago. So if, you, two years if ago. you go right back to the beginning when you first were injecting and you'd been injecting and doing aesthetics for a couple of years and you didn't have ultrasound, what would you, what would you say to your younger version um, who sort of turns around and says, oh, there's no one else using ultrasound. Like, why do I need to use this? What would you tell your younger self now, your younger version of you? Although you look young still anyway, Maurizio, so I'm sure you... I would, I would tell them that um, it's a commitment. And if you take your, your job seriously, and if you want to carry on or, or, or take care of possible complications, this will be a very big help to localize problems as well. And because, you know, the more you do, the more oh, complications yes, yes. you get. We have been injecting um, HA and other things now, like over 20 years. Now we start to see much more problems, long-term problems, um, malar edemas and swellings and um, delayed onset nodules and all of that stuff. So um, it's a commitment and, and it's actually something that really, really, really helps you to, incre to increase the safety for your patients, for your future patients you want to treat and they want to age with you. They want to be with you actually or, or all of their, their aging process. So this is a very good tool for, for help and I think it's, it's wonderful. It's really good. Yeah. Amazingly so. Viv, over to you. Thank, thanks, yeah. Sonny. Um, uh, fantastic talking to you, uh, Maurizio. I think uh, the learning, um, the training at the CMAC training um, the day before the conference, I was there with yourself, Nicola and Leone as well, and you were three of you were fantastic in the training that you were providing to all of the trainees there. I was luckily a guest of Leone. She invited me to yes. look at the training and it was really kind of her to do that. Um, how, how do you find providing training for practitioners now? Because you provide ultrasound training for trainees like myself and others. Um, what does it, how does it make you feel when you do that training? What, what does it give you? And what does it give the, the trainees when you train them in ultrasound? Mm, I think it's so, so, so um, nice to see how you can actually um, show people in an easy way how can they recognize real-time anatomy in a dynamic uh, phase, you know? And um, it's very rewarding to, to see when you start the day at the beginning, everybody's like, oh, my God, so much stuff and so many names and so many structures. How, how does it look? Um, and by the end of the training, everybody is able to recognize structures, to recognize the bone, to know the golden rules of the ultrasound, how uh, you can do the best way so you can see all of the layers because you know, it's all about understanding and, and making those layers visible. And at the end of the day, the people can tell you where do they see the HA, how does the superficial, the deep fatty tissue look, this mass and some vessels. So it's, it's so nice to see how easy it can be to learn to learn anatomy, that's actually, since I have been using the facial ultrasound, I really, really, really improve my, my, my anatomy knowledge even more for injections because it's so different than surgical anatomy and yeah. uh, the anatomy that we learn from the books. Yeah. So, yeah. and it's, it's, been a, it's been a very, very, very big chance for me. And I am so thankful that Leonie asked me to, to, to go with her. I have been in Scotland, in England, in, in, um, here in Germany. We have been uh, in many other places. Um, I have been practically helping her and learning from her, learning how she teaches it. And um, yes, and, and, and the, the feedback from the, from the students, from the attendees, um, it's always uh, been really grateful. So I'm very, very grateful for this opportunity I have had um, from Leonie. It was really nice to be able to um, be in the same training with you, with the three of you, you know, providing fantastic expert knowledge and, uh, and skill in what you do. Um, one of the actual uh, trainees that, that I was with um, scanning her face. She was, I can't remember if she was a dentist or a nurse, she might have been a dentist, but she'd had um, 
dermal filler treatment of her cheek area about five years previously. And she was complaining about the slight lump lower down her face that she'd noticed over some time. And I think um, we carried out the scan and it was, a, it was an adverse event. Um, a nodule within the SMAS layer was causing a lump, um, which she didn't realize was, was there. And it just showed what could be achieved using the ultrasound in, in a trainee who didn't even realize there was a problem there. So I've got to say, we all did a lot of um, great work. I think you did some fantastic training, Maurizio. And I think everyone who was there really loved the fact that they learned a lot in a short space of time. Um, so I've, I've just got to thank you for that, really. That was just to say fan fantastic work uh, from you. Um, will you be providing training next year, ultrasound training? Do you have plans for that next year? Yes, this is uh, one project I have been now working on. Um, I am planning with, uh, with Leonie some trainings in South America and like expanding this also to Spain. Um, so to bring this to 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 also my my hometown to Colombia, and um, so we have very nice projects for for this and also in Germany. She told me, she 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 said, Mauricio, why are why are you why are you not doing your own courses? But and I said, well, <laughs> I actually I I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do somebody's you? asking there. Somebody's asking Mauricio. Um, uh, it's Co Caroline Koch, yes. You're saying, are there yeah. trainings in Germany coming up? Are there any, tra are there any German, German based yes, trainings? Yes, yes, we are coming uh, this, this coming year. We will start um, providing where, this training. Where, 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 where should they go to, Maurizio, for that? Where should they look on which web websites or will it be on? Um, I think we will start in the north of Germany where I am based in Hamburg. Okay. And from there, we will see um, how, how it develops. Will it be will it be advertised on your website or will it be uh, how will you sort of? Oh yes, this will be in our website or Instagram. So like uh, Leon okay. is doing. Fine, okay. so you, you exactly. heard it first. You heard it first. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah. Um, I was I was going to ask you, um, uh, Maurizio, CMAC, um, Great Complications Conference, the first conference uh, in the UK. Um, how was the pr presenting of your? case study how did you find it because you were talking about a complication that occurred um at some point beforehand and it involved a patient who you carried out treatment for and you were away to concert and you were saying you know you had a phone call and you were in the worst position possible how how was that for you you know providing information about your case study to these hundreds of practitioners from around the world how did you feel about that well, to be honest, I, I was feeling some kind of nervous at the beginning, but you know, CIMAC is a family and what I think and what I really, really love about uh, this family is that, you know, nobody, nobody's going to judge anybody and um, we all have so different backgrounds. Everybody has something to contribute. It's not like, oh no, you're not a dermatologist, you're not a plastic surgeon, so you're not good. It's like, it's, it's a very, very, very big family and we learn from each other. And um, yes, it was for me a nice opportunity also to, to share with, with the attendees and with everybody how we are dealing with complications today with the help of the ultrasound, how we do the assessment um, and the ultrasound guided injections, how we do ultrasound guided injections for necrosis. And in this uh, case, which will be online on the CMAC um, internet site in a very short uh, period of time to, to purchase all of the conference talks. So I, I won't tell everything, but um, it's, uh, it was for me <laughs> yeah, a very, very, I was really honored to, to have the chance to present how, how to deal with this kind of complications. And um, yes, it, that was something I, I did uh, also with the help um, of Leonie as well. She, she's a very nice mentor and she has been always there for, for me when I have a question or where I have a problem. And, um, and this is what I love about this family, that everybody is so connected with each other. 
one of the practitioners from South America, Rosa Segrist, who's a radiologist, she's, she's saying that she's looking forward to you coming over to South America next year to help with Brazil. training in they want, you, they want you to be in Brazil, Maritza. Yes, very I popular. love Rosa. I know Rosa. She's, um, she's very, very good. And she has done so much um, research work and her work is beautiful. She has a very, very nice background. She's um, actually a radiologist doing a lot of diagnostics and, and look how, how, how much and how far she has come with, with um, her job and all of that he has, uh, she has contributed. And uh, yes. we're, coming really to, nice. we're coming to Colombia next, in, uh, next year to Cartagena. That's actually the, the place I was born. You know, it's directly at the Caribbean Sea. So we, okay. we, we will be there for the, for the IMCAS in, Carta, in Cartagena. Oh, IMCAS wow. is there. Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. Yes. It's a very beautiful place. Very beautiful place to know. Wow. So guys. Uh, you're selling it very well, Mauricio. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have to start. You do win. It's a fantastic yes, it's like a dream Caribbean old city. Um, and, you know, and combine this with, with, with aesthetic conferences and ultrasound courses. Um, I have to work how out nice how many fillers. Is. I have to work out how many fillers I have to do in clinic to afford. <laughs> it, a lot. It was just a lot. <laughs> based on based on what you've been saying about the whole aspect of ultrasound in your work, uh, Maurizio. Yes. I'm just wondering. You know, practitioners that might be watching our lives, and particularly tonight. They'll be listening, they'll be thinking, yes, you, you do your aesthetics work, you've done lots of work without ultrasound, you might be using it now, but, but what benefit is it really to me? Why should I even consider it as a, as a practitioner? Um, I've never had a problem, I've never had a complication that I know of. How really is it going to help me? What would you say to somebody like that, Maurizio? Well, you know, people that say that never had a problem and never had a complication, it's like, I don't really believe in that. And uh, <laughs> you know, it's maybe that the person doesn't even recognize how a complication looks like or doesn't do enough to, to, to create a complication. And um, when you do a certain number of, 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 of uh, treatments, you will see complications. Uh, and that's, that's, a norm, that's the normal process that, that belongs to the, to the evolution of, uh, of, getting a, of becoming a great injector, you know, of yeah. dealing with that. So, uh, and I think in terms of safety, in terms of um, outcome of your treatments, uh, this uh, would be, in my humble opinion, as uh, Tom Decades always say, a very good help um, to, to provide that. I mean, not everybody has to use it. Not everybody has to, to, to buy an a, 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 um, expensive device for that. It's a very, very individual um, decision and, um, you know, for me, it's something that I, I really feel a passion uh, about, so that's why I am doing it a lot. Yeah. But this yeah. is not uh, something that, that, that everybody, um, like, 100% needs to do. Yeah. But, yeah. you know, we will see how it, how it develops. I think in the future, it will be necessary to, to, to know how to handle uh, uh, ultrasound well, to as treat we, complications as, with this as, we as well. Discussed, as we discussed, Mauricio, I mean, unfortunately, the UK is the wild west of uh, aesthetics, whereas I think every other country has some sort of uh, regulation um, or yes. management. But uh, yeah, I mean, come to the wild west and just do what you want, basically. Yeah. Um, it's but it's, it, it is it is an odd place to work in terms of aesthetics uh, in the UK. Um, I was just going to mention, um, I was just going to ask you, uh, Maurizio, in terms of thinking about ultrasound, say somebody is thinking, right, I'm interested. I yeah. want to implement ultrasound in my work. I've heard what you've all said. I agree with you. In terms of starting, do I go on training? Do I buy a device? Where do I start? How do I begin? What would you say to them? Um, I think um, it's really not so difficult as people might think. It's really, really not so difficult. You don't need to be uh, like to learn physics. You just need to, to, to understand how something looks like on the, on the, on the screen and uh, forget about physics. You just have to, it's really, really easy. So I would recommend um, to maybe start 
doing a e-learning course and um, in my in, in in my case for example i bought the ultrasound first and i started scanning everybody that came my neighbor uh, marek and you know the patients just getting my eyes trained to see that shades of gray the pattern to try to train your your brain because this this is something you have to to really commit to train your brain to 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 have this pattern and um i think i bought my device six months before i went to the real course to the hands on uh, with leonie and and because i needed to have a little base and 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 I was already actually in, in, in the past using ultrasound, you know, so um, that was not so difficult for me. But for somebody that has never, absolutely never had like uh, any relation to ultrasound, I would recommend to start with a basic uh, uh, e-learning course and then going uh, to, to, to the hands-on course. And after that, maybe um, start with a portable device. They are developing in, in a very, very... Um, rapid way and they are actually also very very nice so i think in in, in the next years the, the 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 portable devices will be really really good in terms of um um resolution and all of the the, the things you can do with these other bigger devices yeah and yeah I've, I've, in my own work uh, i get occasionally different practitioners around the local area just asking questions about the use of ultrasound in my work and some of them have come in just to see, you know, me working with the device, just to show them how to carry out simple uh, vascular mapping, you know, just show them how the, how the device can be used. Do you, do you provide shadowing to other practitioners or your clinic? Do you provide any shadowing services to let other practitioners see how you use it in your own work? Well, actually, I have had some, some questions about this and... Um, Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It depends on, on, on how busy the schedule is and, and how the situation is. But, um, um, you know, it is arrangeable, so it, it, it's possible. It is not impossible. I think it is important to, to, to share the things that we know and, um, and, and leave this, this, you know, this kind of thoughts behind that, no, he's going to, to learn the same that I am, that I'm doing. And um, maybe he's, you know, getting my patients away or, or this kind of thinking. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think this is a, a very healthy way of thinking. Yeah, so, and, yeah. and you know, more nowadays the, the patients are very aware about the ultrasound. I have patients, today I saw patients from, from Austria and from Berlin. They come, they came here because they have problems. They have a malar edema after cheek injections and tear drop injections, and they have been dissolved many times. Um, and then they see that there is an option to, with an ultrasound to identify where the filler has been placed, where maybe the problem um, uh, can be, and, um, and they are now very aware about that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the same in the Netherlands. Leone and the others in the Netherlands at um, Erasmus were saying yes. the public are very well educated, you know, in, in realizing the benefits of ultrasound, and a lot of a lot of patients won't go to a practitioner unless they're using ultrasound in, in the Netherlands. That's what some of the uh, specialists there have mentioned to us. Um, just, just basically looking into the future, uh, Maurizio, what do you see as the future of ultrasound in aesthetics work? What would you say to uh, say about that? I think the future, um, I think it, it will have definitely a, 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 a place uh, in, the field of complications management um, with vascular adverse events, with uh, delayed onset nodules that are um, not so um, easy to dissolve. Um, and also, why not in this new, uh, in, in, in blindness? We know we, 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 we know this is a very rare but devastating complication. And um, I remember seeing um, Stephen Weiner uh, at the conference talking about um, how you can potentially provide a treatment for, for acute blindness related to filler, identifying the supertrochlear and super 
um, orbital notches and, and, and cannulating than uh, those vessels and provide a halorodidase injection with the help of the ultrasound. Yeah. And um, I think, you know, we, we, we still have to learn a lot. We still have to find out about many pattern me mechanisms and we're still now in, in, a, in a very embryological um, state of our field. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I think this, this, this will play a very big role in, in complications management and also in identifying um, old fillers before yes, you yeah. do injections. Thanks very much, Maurizio. Very, very nice talking to you. Anything to add, Sonny, or any questions that were asked at all? No, there's so much to talk about. And just, I mean, um, Maurizio is just leading into topics about perforators and flow and lymphatic drainage and all, all that you can actually visualize now with ultrasound. But that's for another time. I'm sure, Maurizio, we can, we can harass you again into joining us. Uh, maybe a little bit earlier. You're stuck in clinic still, so I'm sure you want to go home. But thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure. Yes, it's been a pleasure to talk to you guys. Thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, you're and welcome. Who thank knows? You. We will see each other as soon uh, sooner than we maybe think in the next yeah. CMAP. Well, maybe if I, can do, if I can do enough fillers in between now and IMCASC in Colombia, then maybe. But uh, like you said, it has to be a lot of fillers. Uh, maybe economy <laughs> class flight rather than business class. <laughs> So you start now. You start now, yeah. <laughs> oh, but th thanks very much for joining us this, this evening, uh, Maurizio. Very kind of you. I'll just mention quickly, next week we're going to be joined by a sonographer and trainer who's based in Sydney in Australia, uh, Lisa Hackett. And she's going to join us on Sunday, the 11th of December at 10 a.m. UK time because it's 9 p.m. in Sydney. Um, so that's pretty much it. Again, thanks very much for joining us, Maurizio. And we'll hopefully catch you again face to face at some point in the future. We will definitely. Good night. Good night. Definitely. Thanks for hosting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Goodbye, guys. Have a great See night. You. you too. Bye. Bye, Maurizio. Bye, Bye Sonny.